All right, guys, here is my real quick, I'm going to try to do this without being too long-winded, uh, review of the Armitan Armadillo. So uh, before I get started, I'm going to just tell you uh, what I was looking for when I when I bought this frame. Uh, the, the purpose of this was to just kind of be a fun flyer to get some HD video, uh, not really do any kind of, you know, racing. It might, you know, could serve the purposes uh, as a backup quad or, uh, you know, something like that. But, uh, you know, probably not like a front runner in my fleet or anything. But uh, the reason why I bought this was because during my fun flies and, and even during racing, my number one frame of choice right now, which is the Space Cowboy, I break cameras all the time. The, the problem is with the frame, uh, and it's really the only problem that I have with it, is the camera is just too exposed. And I just got tired of breaking uh, cameras. So for fun flying and all that, uh, I wanted something that could carry an HD cam, uh, but wasn't as heavy as, you know, a normal H style quad, like an alien or the Armitan F1, uh, five inches or the, any, any of the five inch or, uh, F1 series frames. Uh, and so one of the, one of the things, well, three of the things that three or four of the things <laughs> that I was looking for before I bought the frame is I wanted to have a small footprint. So I'm really kind of big these days on drag coefficient and, this, while it's not a minimalist like, you know, a Shriker or uh, any kind of those center stack designs, um, or even, you know, it's a little bit bigger than the, the Space Cowboy, uh, you can soft mount your flight controller, right? And that that's a big thing. So I wanted a small footprint. So, you know, it's kind of the happy medium between a Shriker or a Space Cowboy and say an Alien or a uh, F1. So, it, you know, it is that happy medium. I can soft mount it, which I can't do on, like I said, a Falcon or anything like that. I wanted adequate camera protection, which I got from this uh, nicely designed uh, vertical side plates. And I wanted to be able to carry an HD camera. So here we have a uh, run cam mount. And I was thinking, well, I can mount this thing on here like this. And... I can get some nice, uh, nice footage this way. So anyway, um, however, after I got the build, after after I got the frame, and uh, you know, it is an Armitan frame quality. I was expecting it to be high end, and of course, it always is. And um, it's got a nice PDB. It's got a five volt and a nine volt regulator on it. Uh, four millimeter arms, two millimeter sides, and top and back plate. Uh, 330 grams so it's not you know it's not it's lighter than you know like the aliens or the f1s uh, but it's not as light as you know your your space cowboy so like i said this is kind of a happy medium this isn't like a purebred racing machine and that's not what i was going for so it, all that's fine and well but i'm conflicted because while it does do all those except really the hd cam um there's a lot of kind of downsides to this frame. First of all, it's difficult to build. And when you do build it, I would suggest, you know, desolder your ESC wires. So you have just bare wire and so put your side plates on and solder from the PDB out. Don't put your ESCs and say, okay, I want my ESC here. And now I'm going to plumb my wiring this way. Okay, it's going to be a pain in the ass, and it, it might not work out very well. So start from the PDB, work your way out. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to recommend is you sand all this down, get like a rat tail file, and anywhere where the wires might touch this side plate, I would, uh, I'd sand it down. Um, I've got the XS30 amps, so the gauge wire is a little bit thicker. If you're using a 20 amps ESCs, you're going to have a little bit more room. And it might not be a big of an issue, but that's that's your call, not mine. And uh, another issue, and this really is an issue for me, but it might be an issue for you if you have a D4 or two or an XSR or a Lemon RX diversity receiver, anything with like really long antennas, because there's really nowhere to mount the damn antennas. Your vertical posts are not vertical; they're horizontal, so you don't really have. Uh, a, a place to to mount them uh you you could use this back post and have the antennas come out this way but 
the standoffs are tapered. So they get fatter towards the end. So you're not going to be able to get those, like the forever tubes from Great 3D and slide those on. Even if you do find a, uh, a standoff, well, you know, you might just find a standoff that doesn't have tapering to it. Well, it's a weird size. It's like 28 millimeters or something strange like that. So I, I'm sure you could special order one, but that's just kind of a pain in the butt. Why do you... Anyway, so uh, the the last thing and the probably the biggest gripe, which is uh, actually the culprit of why I'm not running my HD cam, which I wanted to, is the location for your options for mounting your video transmitter. So you can see here, uh, I've got my video transmitter set up uh, on the bottom side of this top plate. And it's nice, I can access all this and, and, and all that, but I can't really strap my HD cam. I don't want to run a Velcro strap around my video transmitter, trapping heat in and, you know, torquing down onto it, pushing and flexing on that PDB and putting that at risk. So uh, the, the other options were to come out the side with it, okay? And I could have just as easily taken my... Uh, threaded piece and soldered it directly to the to the UBAD or not the UBAD but the uh, Hawkeye here and had a you know board mounted SMA but in doing that you would have had to do a 90 degree angle right and when you're flying along ripping around you know I was afraid that maybe this even in a hard maneuver would rotate back into the uh, prop so I just I, I couldn't agree with that if you come out the side you can do that and kind of bend it, you know, really hard, you know, right angle bend and maybe do one of these things and mount it underneath the arm. But then you're, I don't know, I just can't really agree with this being here. I, you know, I don't want that prop wash on that one prop. It, may, it might fly wonky. It might not. I don't know. But I don't know. It just doesn't really sit well with me. So this was the only option. So you do have uh, two options here. You have a LED plate, which is pretty cool. Or you can do this thing. Um, I chose to do this thing. And I've crashed a couple times, and this is held up well. It's only ejected once. Um, but I think this is something that's going to just only get more and more loose over time, and I'm going to keep having uh, those problems. So th the build is, uh, you know, I feel conflicted about it. Uh, also, uh, it's not as rigid. I mean, there's a lot of flex in this thing it's not like uh my f1 acropod that thing was super stiff my space cowboy super stiff this thing's just got a lot of slop to it uh and i don't know if it's because it's a square interlocking design all the other frames kind of interlock you know uh differently so i yeah i just don't know what where the slop is coming into play here. Um, it does have this nice lipo pad. A lot of the Armitane models are coming with these, you know, custom cutout pad. Uh, Space Cowboys got one now too. So, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know that I can really recommend this to anybody. If you're, if you're looking to race with it, sure. Uh, if, if you're looking to carry an HD cam, this thing's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but it's, it's lightweight. It does have a small profile. You know, when I put my lipo here and it's flying through the air, it's, uh, it, it's not this huge, unnecessary long fuselage. Uh, so, uh, let me actually just, while I have my lipo, <laughs> explain to you guys this stuff. So I'm running these, uh, R-Line. 1550s and if anybody who's gotten this this thing's like three or four grams shy of a regular 1800 milliamp hour battery so the shape of the cells instead of it being like really long these things are short and fat it's like a uh it's like a chode lipo <laughs> but because of that i had to put these little zip ties here to extend because otherwise my velcro strap was not able to uh, connect. So anyway, that's that's my explanation for this. Um, 
is it going to be a good frame to fly? Yes, I've already flown it. It's it, it flies fine. Um, it flies just as good as my X's, and that's probably you know a lot to do with uh, you know 3.0 being kick ass and uh, BL Heli S, but uh, I I don't know if I could recommend this frame uh, uh, to anybody who's looking to be a serious racer. Uh, or if you're trying to carry a HD cam. So it, it just, I don't know, it's it's like a frame without a home right now, in, in, in my opinion. But I'm going to have fun with it because uh, I've built it, and it is fast. It's very fast, and it, it handles well. So, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm knocking it because I'm not. It's just, you know, there, there's pros and cons to it, and um, that's it.